Hello, my name is Shane Smith and I'm a senior in mechanical engineering at the Kansas State University. I'm with the wind turbine design team and today we're going to look at a tutorial of how to set up a flow simulation in SOLIDWORKS for a wind turbine design. As you can see we have our wind turbine here. Um, this is our full assembly. One of the things we had to be careful when we made this assembly is to make sure that there weren't any zero thickness or interference issues because that will interfere with the way the simulation works. It will actually not let you run that. So that's the first step is to go ahead and make an assembly. You'll want to make sure that everything is set fixed so that nothing's allowed to rotate. SOLIDWORKS doesn't do rotating parts in a flow simulation. You can rotate the flow, um, but not the parts. So the first thing that we need to do to set up our flow simulation is we're going to build a wind tunnel. Now I actually have one built already. I'm going to go ahead and show that now. Um, so when you make the wind tunnel you want to make it a little bigger than your part. Uh, if I hide one of these lids here you can see. Um, so it's about not too much space around the part just uh, make it pretty symmetrical. You want the distance that your part is sitting in the wind tunnel to be enough that the flow can stabilize before it hits your uh, wind turbine in this case, uh, but other than that it, it doesn't need to be too long or too much bigger um, just like a regular wind tunnel. Um, once you make the wind tunnel I usually hide it because we need to be able to, s to um, select these surfaces whenever we set up our flow simulation and that way you can actually see your wind turbine as well. It makes it a little easier since that's what we want to focus on. Okay so flow simulation is under tools and then you go to add-ins down here at the bottom and you're going to find the flow simulation it's usually at the bottom here and you're going to hit OK to add that to our active add-ins once you do that we're going to once it loads you'll get another tab up here uh, for flow simulation and you can see that I already have a flow assembly set up uh, we're going to go ahead and delete this one and we're going to remake another one. An important note, if you delete one that's active, SOLIDWORKS gets um, very unhappy and usually has some errors. Uh, I haven't had, haven't been able to do that on any computer that I've done it with, so make sure that you make a new simulation before you try to delete your old one. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set up a new one uh, just to show you how all that's done. So I click the wizard up here at the top, um, and then you're going to go ahead and start going through all the settings here. Um, so first you choose your unit type. I like to use SI units personally. Uh, this is going to be an internal. Um, because we have it set up in a wind tunnel and with lids, we're, to use, we're looking at an internal flow. Uh, the flow inside the wind tunnel over all the surfaces in the wind tunnel. This reference axis, we want to make sure that we are using the right axis. We do want wind flow along the x-axis, so we go ahead and select that. Then we go ahead and we add any fluids you want. So you could use liquids here if you were using doing a propeller analysis or something but we want to just use air um, I leave all that just as fine these are the standard um, temperature and everything and since it's going to be everything's at ground level here we don't need to change any of that uh, then for the geometry resolution I usually go to four I think that's a good uh, this is actually fairly accurate as far as the time it takes and how accurate it gets. 4 usually gives you pretty accurate without taking too long to process. Okay, now in this case I already have lids set up so it went ahead and it set up the computational domain domain, which is just where it's looking at um, solving everything. So you can see that it just corresponds to the length of our wind tunnel and a fluid subdomain uh, is in here as well. So if you wanted to create these lids, the easiest way to do that would be to make your wind tunnel like normal and then if you come into flow simulation in tools there's a create lids function and so what you would then do is you you would select a face like that basically on the wind tunnel and you select that planar face and then it'll create a lid for it um, and that's it will make two new parts that will go into your assembly and they are mated uh, by distance unfortunately they are made by distance to the wind tunnel so if you ever move this wind tunnel around those those lids will stay where they were and you'll have to redo them okay alright now we need to set up some boundary conditions uh, for this case we want to look at what we're doing in competition we're gonna have an inlet velocity 
So we come here and I'm using 17 meters a second, which is a little faster than what we'll see at competition. Um, I'll go ahead and select that face there. So we're going to have 17 meters a second coming from that face towards our wind turbine. Uh, reference axis is X, which is correct for our case. Um, and you don't want to click fully developed flow because if you do that, you're going to have a little higher wind speed when you get to your actual turbine. Um, so you're going to get about 17 meters a second, and it's going to be about 17 when it gets to the wind turbine. If you choose fully developed, it will be closer to 20. Okay, so that's the inlet, and we can see the velocity arrows are going the right way there. And then when you do that, you need to set up an outlet condition as well. And the, in, the outlet condition you need to set is environmental pressure here at the end. So this is saying that we'll have an inlet speed, but here we need to have environmental pressure. Uh, so I mean it's essentially saying that there's an opening on the other end here that the, all the air gets to go out of. Otherwise you'd have kind of the airflow would stack up here and then come back and you would kind of have this flow case. Or basically we're saying that this is an outlet that we push the air through and then it leaves on this planar surface. Okay, so that's there. Then the next thing is what are you interested in getting from the simulation? The simulation will show you the velocity lines and that's really helpful. Um, but one thing, you can also get a lot of data from this that you can look at the forces that are that are caused by the flow you can actually calculate the torque caused by your turbine design as well so we want to go ahead and find some values in here um, so I'm interested in velocity always just to see what the the airflow is going through um, I think the average turbulent um, intensity is nice to know as well uh, and then I usually skip the normal force. I'm interested in the forces in the X, Y, and Z, and then the torques in the X, Y, and Z. Uh, those, those are usually my interests as far as this goes. Um, because I want to see if the wind is blowing on here, there's you know some surface area here, is that going to torque this member much? Am I going to worry about if there's any deflection? Then there could be vibrational issues when I'm running this. It's also, you, you're curious to see what kind of torque you have on your actual uh, turbine blades. Um, these will be used for convergence, so the more goals you have, uh, the longer it's going to take, but uh, you'll find that it doesn't take too long. Uh, so this is our full setup now. We have everything running. Um, if we go ahead and switch to the isometric view now, we're going to go ahead and click Run. You want to make sure if you make small changes, go ahead and make sure that you select this new calculation again so it doesn't reuse some of your old data uh, if you make changes after you do your first one. So the big thing is once we get to this window, um, we have a goal plot here that it's just remembering what I did before. So what this is doing is it's showing us the current values of all of our different um, values. So everything we asked for, so we can look and see how torque is changing with our time. And then it's also graphing them, depending on the number of iterations. So we can see how well they're converging. So some of these started out pretty spiky, and then they're flattening out here. Um, so you can see here, it's achieving some of these criteria. It's They're converged, 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 and so you can watch all these converge, and we're done. Um, so it doesn't take that long to run a simulation. And then we have to do some post-processing, though. So, of course, the coolest thing to see is what does the flow look like around the turbine. This really kind of gives you a really gut feeling as far as how well did your simulation work and how well was your structure design. Um, so I like the lines, personally, and we want to look at velocity. Um, so what we'll be looking... Oops, excuse me. What we'll be looking for, and I think... Uh, I think 500 is a good number. Then in this box, you're going to select what you want to see those lines around. So for example, if we just click the shaft, all those 500 lines would just be looking at the flow around the shaft. So we wouldn't see anything around the blades or anything on this box. It would just be on the shaft. Um, so we probably want to select everything except for the wind tunnel and the lids. So that's our whole wind turbine there. So we can go ahead and select that. 
Uh, these advanced settings in here, you can put a crop region so that you could cut off the the front area here and cut off the back area. Um, I don't think that that matters really, personally. Um, it might save you a little bit of computation time because it doesn't have to um, post-process as much. What the post-processing is, is it's taking the data from the um, calculation, the simulation, it's taking all those numbers and then rendering them in uh, the simulation window so that you can see all the velocities instead of looking at tables and tables of numbers of the velocity at every little point in here you can actually just see by the colors um, what the velocity is like so the more points that you put on there the longer it's going to take but the more dense of uh, a view you'll have of the different velocities I think 500 is pretty high um, you, if you get too dense then it's hard to see your actual turbine and see what the flow is doing because there's just too many lines so you can adjust the line width and if you were interested for example in the blades you could have just picked the blades and seen just the flow around the blades now this doesn't affect the numbers you get from the calculation it just affects what you see here okay so here's our scale so we can see 17 is going to be in the orange section so you see orange flow that's about the regular speed we're going to do okay and we're going to zoom in a little bit here and the video might blur kind of a little bit just because of the, all the lines that we have on screen at once. Uh, the encoder struggles with that a little bit, but we'll try to let everything sit here before we talk about it too much. So you can see here we have this nice um, turbulent flow in here. The flow is coming up over this plate and then it's kind of getting this um, circular flow in here that actually shapes the air and pushes the air over it. So this works exactly like the bed of a, a pickup truck, for example. Uh, then you can also see the flow coming in here and then separating, that's the green here, the flow separation off of the cylinder. And this matches exactly what you would expect. This is a round cylinder, so it should have some boundary layer separation on the back side, which leads to a lower speed. Okay, then we'll come up and we'll look at the top of the turbine. Like, you can, like we said, the blades are pretty small and we selected many other things than them, so you can see that there's not a lot of um, density of lines along the blades. We really don't get a good idea of the flow along the blades. So if we wanted to see that, we would want to um, keep that 500 points but select just the blades so we could see a higher density of what the flow looks like on the blades. Um, but you can see that this nose cone is really doing its job. It's shaping the, the flow without losing too much speed. We go from orange to yellow, so we do lose a little bit, but not as much as we could have. And over the blades, we still have mostly orange. We have a little bit of yellow flow here. And then in here we're going to have a nacelle eventually. That hasn't uh, been put into the simulation yet though. Uh, we could go ahead and look at the, the frontal view and we'll try to let's try to zoom in and then let the encoder catch up with us. So as you can see the flow is kind of stacking up and you can see the really the lines of the flow and you can see that there's a stagnation behind the, the tower here and that this base plate affects the flow well downwind of it. Um, but in our area where our blades are spinning, everything looks like it's pretty much exactly the speed that we wanted it at. We have a little bit of losses in here towards the roots, but we kind of know that that was going to be the case, and this isn't where our airfoil is anyway. Uh, we, we're really going get, to be getting the majority of our power from about this point on to the blades. Um, so not too worrisome there. Uh, and then you can look at the top view as well and you can see that everything is nice and symmetric here. You can see that the flow separates off of the shaft in here and this is a good example of you know there's a lot of lines and so it's a little hard to see from this angle but um, you could lower down the lines if you wanted to or just look at different angles. Okay so the flow is matching what our intuition would tell us. This is what we'd expect if we had airflow going over everything. We have the interactions with the flat plates and the cylinders that we would expect. So this makes us pretty confident in our results. Okay, so we'll go, let's go ahead and look at those goals that we set. Alright, so we're going to, just in case that wasn't obvious, we come down here to goal plots, right click on it, insert. If you hit all, you can hit show. And what it's going to do first is it's going to bring up this table. And in this table, we can look at some of the values we get here. So this is really useful for pulling information off, like here's the average of the force. 
So this is the average of all the force felt in all the directions, and we end up with 15 newtons. And that seems pretty reasonable. I mean, in a 17 meters a second, and there's not a lot of frontal area on this, that seems pretty reasonable. 15 newtons, that's not much. Okay, so then we can look at it and say most of that force is actually felt in the x, and that makes sense. We're fit, the wind is in the x direction, so we, we don't expect a lot of force in the other directions. If you look at it, yeah, the other forces are really, really small in the y and the z. Okay, so then let's look at the torque directions. Now, torque around the x, torque around the x axis is the rotation of our turbine. So that's the number we're really, really interested in. And this actually matches what I got in my simulation of cube blade pretty quickly. Um, we got 0 0.019 in cube blade, so it's pretty close. Um, and you can see some of these, um, the minimum and maximum values. So that gives you kind of an idea of you have a little bit of plus minus in here. Um, because of the simulation, we only did a resolution of 4 after all, and we only went to uh, 53, I think, was the number of iterations. Then we can also look around, torque around the Y. Now we expect this to be zero because it is symmetric around the y-axis. Um, and so it's pretty close to zero. There's some issues there, so you know we know that there's some plus or minus uh, in that area. And then the torque around the z-axis, that's how much this shaft is being bent around the base plate here. And so we can look at it, and this is only 1.7 newton meters which is really, really small. So we can tell that there's really not a lot of torque going on here, so we're not going to expect to see any deflection, uh, and that would help with any vibrational issues. If you click on Chart here, this is going to graph things uh, based on the iterations. So you can see about well how they converged. Now the scaling is a little bigger of an issue in some cases because it doesn't really show you the value that they get here. So this average velocity is really good. You can see that it converged pretty quickly and you can hover over each value and see. So I guess we went to 54 iterations, and that was the value at 54 iterations. But it makes sense, average velocity would be pretty consistent. But if we come over here to, say, the force in the Z, the Z force is the force along this axis, which we would expect to be zero. And you can see that it oscillated quite a bit before converging right around the zero. But our torque around the X axis, which we know isn't quite zero, appears to be zero but it's actually, if you look at it, converging to about the number that we saw on there. So it looks like it's zero, but it isn't. So the torque, it was necessary on the torque to make sure that we got to plenty of iterations. But you can see that it had converged for quite a while before we stopped, and so we can be pretty confident of the answer it gave us. Uh, so this just looks at the convergence of those and lets you know kind of how um, well, they're done. So this was probably the limiting factor for our convergence because it really hadn't converged that long until we stopped. So by putting turbulence intensity in there, you actually get a little bit more accurate of an answer because it takes a little longer for this to converge, and so your other numbers are really nice and converged by the time you're done. And that's part of the reason that I like to include this in one of my goals. I also like to look at see how high it is. If you have a lot of turbulence, it might be a sign that you really need to streamline your design a little bit more. And given that we have some, you know, a, literally a flat plate here uh, and this round cylinder, and yet our turbulence intensity is pretty low, I think it shows that this is going to be done pretty well. Okay, now you can export this to Excel, but it's really difficult to graph and work with the data then. Um, so that's up to you. Personally, I like to just use the table values. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. That is a flow simulation in SolidWorks. Um, make sure that you remember to set up a wind tunnel. Uh, use the create lid tool to make things easier because then you don't have to set up your computa computational domain or the fluid domain as well and you'll make sure that you have an enclosed thing for an internal flow analysis and then just step through the wizard and it will t help you with everything as far as figuring out the settings and everything. Um, then there's a lot of other options here that you can play with to get uh, other kinds of post-processing done but I think that the flow analysis and then the table of values is quite sufficient for the basic work that we're doing. I uh, hope this has been helpful, and uh, good luck.